Time is yours, half an hour. Good luck. Hi, uh, I'm Amy. I have been in design school for the last five years, and every single day during that time, a global refugee crisis has been going on somewhere else in the world. And when I, on my very first day of DAP um, in 2013, the number of refugees from Syria had reached two million people, which is six times the population of Cincinnati. Two years later, in 2015, I was on a co-op placement and I was commuting to work by car. And on the radio, I would hear stories about people who were so desperate to leave their homes that they were getting into plastic boats to try to cross oceans. And when I heard these stories, I would cry by myself. I would put my head down and focus on my schoolwork. Two years later again, in 2017, the federal government announced that they'd be cutting by more than half the number of refugees they'd be accepting into the country. And I just realized I couldn't keep my head down anymore. Um, and I didn't really know where to start. And I ended up starting close to home. And that's when I started volunteering with the Welcome Project. And this is a network organization in Cincinnati that um, their group helps people with all different types of issues. There are refugees and immigrants in Cincinnati with healthcare, transportation, all kinds of issues. My particular volunteer assignment was assisting with art classes and sewing classes for adult women. And this particular program had started because they noticed there was a high incidence of social isolation in this particular group. And as a volunteer, I could see that the program was really successful in tackling those issues. So the women in the classes were gaining these communities, making new friends, getting out of the house, building their confidence. But they still faced lots of other problems in other parts of their lives, and especially economic problems because uh, typically their family structure would work that their husband would be the primary breadwinner of the family and he faced all of his own barriers to get a, getting a good paying job. Um, then at the same time, the art program itself was having such success and once you start getting creative, you have tons of new ideas for how to expand and collaborate, um, but the money just wasn't always there. So our solution for both of those problems at the same time was to start a company um, where the women would use their art skills to make handmade goods um, and then they would be for sale to the public and any money left over after selling them would go into expanding the art programming and sewing programming. So it was around this time that I told my volunteer supervisors, who are here today, that I was a product design student um, and lo and behold this became my capstone project. <laughs> so, um, my team was Cheryl Rajmandari, who has over 10 years of experience working with refugees in the city, and Cal Colin, who is an expert on experimental art and social practice engaging community in art, and Lourdes Santos, who is an asylum seeker from Guatemala, and we're hoping would be one of the first employees of this new enterprise. Um, and we started out by conducting a field survey, survey asking what are other similarly positioned companies doing in this category. And we saw a lot of scarves and lotions and handbags. And that led us to ask how could we make products um, that would really reflect the values of the Welcome Project and bring some of those like positive, joyful experiences we'd had experienced in class to the public. Um, and that was the start of this brand, which is called Welcome Home, kind of as a reference to the Welcome Project, things that make people feel warm. And we started, the next thing to try and answer this question is we went through a series of interviews. So we talked to people familiar with the Welcome Project, the women in the classes, people who we thought might be potential customers of this brand, um, boutique owners, and after synthesizing all of those results, we came up with the question, how might we create a product that collects stories or memories? And that really was the basis of the Welcome Home brand. And um, we started ideating on how to answer that question. Of course, there's 
a million ways to answer that question. And we started making things and testing stuff. Um, and our first real prototype was an idea called Storybox. So this is a themed series of boxes. And each one contains um, a set of stories and books that is written and sourced by refugees from all around the world. And then also contains blank notebooks where you could add your own stories and maybe it relates to some of the same themes. Um, and we started taking this um, into like focus group sessions to examine that idea more. And we found that the reception was very positive and people really especially liked that part where you added your own stories in the blank notebooks. So we heard feedback, things that said, um, it would be awesome um, if this could be something I could take to a gathering, maybe a family gathering, have a group experience with it, like maybe more meaningful than Jenga, um, if this is the one time I have to see these people. Um, and we heard also stories like, um, could we, wouldn't it be awesome if this experience somehow got documented to be looked back upon later? Um, so we really liked all those suggestions and we added those things to our list so it would be a group activity and it would be a time capsule in some way, shape, or form. Um, so from there, we just kept going with making and testing and making and testing until finally the idea of illumination um, came up and that's what um, the introductory product is for the Welcome Home brand. And it is a storytelling activity. So um, it allows groups of family or friends to learn more about each other and become closer as a group. Um, and I have a little video of some users, two different groups of users using a prototype version of it. It'll explain a little more about how the gameplay goes. Guidelines. This is a storytelling activity. Begin by setting up your lantern, which I'll do in a second. Light a tea light in the center of the stand. Place 15 wax dots in the glass and place it over the flame. You draw a card, read it aloud. Then oh, whoever okay. found it out will explain the story behind their answer. <laughs> Others may ask questions. When the storyteller is finished, they may pull the circle off the card and drop it into the glass. Okay, cool. <laughs> you keep the white? Yeah. Okay. You just take this. Okay, um, this may not look like it, but it's the river. <laughs> Aww. And um, I feel like there are so many places that I could say for everyone here, but I feel like the river is part of who you are <laughs> in, in a very like tangible sense and that we've all been there with you together in that place. Draw your strongest emotion in the last two weeks. <laughs> What does she do? She's got stars over her. Yeah. Um, I don't quite know what emotion that is, but um, I think I I just have been thinking a lot about how lucky I am, and it like just hits me, and I'm like, oh my god, it just feels super. Oh lucky. my god, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so. Um, that really covers the group activity aspect of our goal. And then as far as the time capsule goes, um, all of the answers that people write to their stories get written down on these cards and this circle peels off and it all melts together with these wax beads over the centerpiece. Um, so when the activity is finished and the candle goes out, um, the wax goes from this transparent liquid with the circles floating in it into what it looks like now, because this is a fake candle, <laughs> um, where it hardens and the stories are sealed up inside of the container. And then anytime you want to use it again, you can pull it back out and light a candle under there and the wax will melt again and it turns see-through. So you can see the stories and also all of the wax beads, we infuse them with essential oil. So the scent of the activity comes back to you. So it's a time capsule or like I sometimes even think of it as a time machine because it can really just like transport you back to where you were at that time. 
Um, so that's the story of illumination, and that was part of my project, but another big aspect is just what we um, created as far as the ecosystem that it lives within, the Welcome Home brand. So um, the central question is creating fulfilling employment for refugee and immigrant artisans. That's where the story started. Um, and we have what I call an intentional, intentional ecosystem for making a sustainable economic system that connects artisans to customers. So I'll just be following through with this up here. The first step is design. So the introductory product illumination was designed by me just on a volunteer basis. Future versions of the product, because there's a lot of places that you could go, or future new products that answer that same question about collecting stories and memories may be designed by other people like the artisans themselves, um, other community members, um, but always keeping in mind during the development part of the process that we're working in conjunction with the artisans, with all of the refugees and immigrants that surround them. So in, the, in this case, um, we did like storytelling workshops, trying to understand like how do you connect and share, st share stories and memories with your families and your friends, always like making sure that we're working on it together collaboratively. And then as far as sourcing materials, that's the next step. And we always make sure to use materials and, so, and processes that are safe and pleasant. So like right now, I don't see us in the near future like making a product that requires a blowtorch or anything. Maybe we'll get there someday, but. Um, so safety and then also the whole idea of this project is making um, a self-sustaining business. So um, we need to figure out ways since we're using, since we're doing small scale production of using simple materials cleverly in order to make them valuable. And then we also try as much as we can to use Cincinnati sources and become part of like the local small business economy here. Um, the next part is fabrication. So the way it works now is anybody who's in the art classes or the sewing classes can also sign up to be an employee and work in the fabrication team. And I actually have another little video of how um, for Illumination we did a pilot run of 50 products. It happened over the course of three weeks and we did six work, like half day work sessions. Um, so the women like did all the different stuff and you'll see it. Um, it comes to selling, which is a really important part. <laughs> um, 
What we are hoping to do for this is make our primary sales channel be our online store, which is also something that I worked on developing as part of this whole project um, because we want to reach as broad of an audience as we can. Um, and in the meantime, while we're getting our feet on the ground and spreading the word, there's a lot of opportunities to do like partnerships for retail opportunities here in Cincinnati. So um, we had a little event to launch this product a few weekends ago um, where people could come to the Welcome Project headquarters just down the street in Camp Washington to buy them. And um, we're going to partner up with a school to sell them as potential Mother's Day presents to the students there, things like that. Um, and finally, connect. Of course, we started this project hoping to create fulfilling employment for refugee and immigrant artisans. But we also see a huge gap in the way that the general public thinks about these women and who we know they are and who they know they are. Um, and we think that our brand has a great opportunity to sort of draw some connections and build empathy between those groups while we're also doing the fulfilling employment piece. Um, so. Um, and what we did for this project, project is each of the boxes comes with a letter that comes from one of the nine artisans that participated in the pilot. And the letter has a little story about their life, um, three stories from them personally, and then also a URL. So you can go onto the website and it links you to the artisan's profile. And you can watch a video of her telling the story of each of those three. And then these just peel right off the letter and can go into your same centerpiece. So quite literally, she can play along with you and you can all like be together even if you're from like at a very far distance. So that completes the cycle. We have lots of ideas for where the next generation of designs can go in the future. Um, and I have been so happy to work on this cycle as a whole and throughout the whole project I just learned a huge amount. I met tons of amazing people. Um, I used to just watch the news and then go back to what I was doing but now this actually is what I'm doing. just feels really great and all of that started because I took something really important that was in the background of my life and I brought it to the forefront of my life so that's the big lesson I learned. Thanks.